This is Bait, Life Outside the Federal Witness Protection Program. A very dangerous way to exist. Skin has, cat has, everybody gone bad. Situation, aggravation, everybody. Allegation, innocence, on the news, everybody. Dark food, bang, bang, shot dead, everybody gone bad. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Forced displacement of children in Tucson, Arizona. Hey, it's Susan. Welcome to tonight's episode of War Crimes Unit. Nice to see ya. You know, when I was down here before in Tucson, I was having problems in Apache Junction, Arizona, linked into a domestic violence shelter. Scandal. And I was staying down here in Tucson at a domestic violence shelter. There was a woman in the emerged domestic violence shelter with me that just got assaulted by a gang. I think it was like about a 10 member gang. I don't know. It was a gang. She literally got the shit kicked out of her. Irma Tovar. Holy cow, dude. Here's the kicker of it. The emerged domestic violence shelter is, is relatively located within the, you know, um, a well populated you know, the, the, the city, within the city. It's not like it's out on the outskirts, right? They actually have a couple shelters. But now, why Irma Tovar? I mean, when I say she got the shit kicked out of her, she got the shit kicked out of her. She had big, huge bruises all over her whole body, and she was wearing this neck brace, and she said she couldn't swallow. See, like, when, she, when I saw her, and she, you know, was telling me that she couldn't swallow. See, I got worried. I'm like, dude, I'm like, girl, like, let me, like, look you over here. I mean, boy, it was bad. She really got nailed. Now, why she ended up in a hospital within the city limits of Tucson, Arizona, and in a domestic violence shelter, a merged domestic violence shelter in Tucson, and her little boy, who I think it was about 10 or so, maybe 10, 12, I don't know, something like that. You're relatively young winds up in a hospital in Mexico. Isn't that a little odd? You know what, I took a bus today. There's a children's hospital that's two miles down the road. So why was the kid not taken to the children's hospital or a children's hospital in Tucson, Arizona? They were trying to split the mother and child up. Apparently he needed surgery. His arm got totally jacked. He needed surgery and was in a hospital in Mexico. Okay, so they were trying to split up the mom and the child. What? Who do Irma Tovar and I, who do we have in common? Senior Special Agent Peter Lazar with Homeland Security Investigations out of Las Vegas. You know Las Vegas, the ones we got all this trouble with Las Vegas. She didn't like Special Agent Peter Lazar. I didn't have a lot of nice things to say about him at that point either. Considering he's in that task force and the business card he gave me has a phone number of the Las Vegas FBI and he told me he was an FBI agent. Apparently, she conducted an interview with him at some point in, in the past. Let's see. So, so, but this is what they're doing. They're coming up with scams to displace children. Beat them up. And then, and then for whatever reason, split them up. Now, I don't know why, I don't know how the hell I, so far, I've escaped a major assault. I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure they've got a major assault planned. Or they've had major assaults planned and I've just been able to foil them thus far. They might not even, they might, hell, dude, you know, I got them in so much damn trouble, they might just skip the major assault and just fucking kill me. See? Okay. So, but, you know, so they, they beat up my kid and split us up in Las Vegas. They beat up Irma Tovar and her son, split them up. They beat up Wendy Davida Rosen and her two twin babies 
and split them up in a scandal. And the colorful story that Wendy told me that came out of a hospital in Texas is that she woke up from the intensive care unit and the nurse told her, oh, you didn't really want those kids. Your kids are dead. You didn't really want them anyway, did ya? Nurse is telling her that. No procedures, no law enforcement procedures followed. Law enforcement procedures are not followed with my son's case. Law enforcement legal proceeding procedures not followed. I don't know the exact, all the details of the ins and outs of, of Irma Tovar, but what was interesting is that when we were bitching about Lazaro, she told me she got help from ICE in El Paso, Texas. She thought I, if I went to Texas, you know, maybe I would get, you know, help or whatever. Apparently she had an attorney over there. But here's the kicker. I mean, I just, you know, and I don't know. I don't know how she ended up in Tucson, Arizona with the shit kicked out of her, but it just seems like something is is wrong as to as to how she would get help from ice in el paso and end up over here and then the forced displacement of the kids but see this is what they're doing and you know what no intervention i don't see any intervention from local law enforcement in these cases none not in las vegas i don't know all the details here in tucson Ir irma just sort of disappeared one day and then obviously law enforcement procedures not followed there in Texas with Wendy's kids. And then Wendy has more kids that are, that look like they're trapped in Iowa. And there's some, um, what they've done in, in, with her other kids is that they've caused enough discord for them not to talk and she can't get them out of Iowa. She doesn't trust law enforcement in Iowa. I told her I don't have a problem with calling the marshal service. Wendy, do you want me to call the marshal service in Iowa? Do you think it would help? This was a couple years ago. She didn't feel comfortable or, you know, she didn't feel confident in the U.S. Marshal Service in Iowa. Because I was just going to call and see if I could talk to the boss. Okay, so since she said no, I didn't pursue it. Because see, here's the trouble. You know what? With um, I had it's sometimes you have to go with the other victims' hunches on stuff, and I would hate the fact if I were to call and there would be something something wrong there in Iowa, and her and her kids would end up getting harmed. I'm not saying it would come from the marshal service, but rather from other law enforcement. Wendy apparently got the shit kicked out of her, I believe in Iowa too, by some corrupt law enforcement. Somehow, um, somehow she ended up in prison without a trial, was locked in some kind of cell for seven or eight months, being starved and beaten, never had a trial, somehow ended up uh, eventually being released and then got the shit kicked out of her by corrections officers. Interesting part about it is, okay, like with Wendy, we both have the FBI in trouble. Or not the FBI in trouble, FBI in common. Have the FBI in common. Or Matovar and I, we have Lazaro, Online Security Investigations, who's an FBI agent in common. Okay. All these are massive federal cases based on some very, very dangerous jackasses. I have a feeling that they have plea bargained all of these kids. For criminal information, terrorism information, and Wendy, in my case, maybe just regular high-end sophisticated criminal information in Irma's case, but but there is a pattern of splitting up the mother and the children. It appears to be law enforcement, federal law enforcement related at the level of the, of the agent level or the special agent level. I don't know what to think. She, that's why I said she didn't feel comfortable with the marshals in Iowa, so I didn't call them. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. But anyway, all of us should be, have been in the Federal Witness Protection Program. If you got these high-end jackasses like that, put any of our kids, put any of us in these programs, and, and they worked in a conspiracy along with what appears to be other law enforcement on a local level, so be a state level to ensure that we are either punished, 
punished and then also our kids are taken from us. So it's, a, it's an intentional forced displacement by law enforcement. It's a violation of international law. I'm sure it's a violation of laws here apparently in the United States, but you know nobody follows the laws in the United States. Right, Elliot? Forced displacement is a, a criminal violation under international law. I don't know where Wendy's babies are. The ones that were allegedly murdered. My son is apparently outside of the country, so he would have some kind of, I, I would think he would have some kind of rights under international law. Along with his half-sister, Brooke. Have some kind of rights under international law. Um, apparently, Irma's son ended up in Mexico, so he would have some kind of rights under international law. And I, I'm not sure if he's a Mexican citizen or not, <laughs> then under Mexican law as well. So, but the, yeah, but these, these are the motives. I just don't think, you know what, ICC, I don't think that they're going to stop. I, I, I have zero confidence in the United States ever stopping this. Zero. It's been going on for years. I think that they're probably doing it in other cases right now as we speak. And boy, I'm telling you, I, I wish I had all the concrete evidence to pull to send up. To send up you guys. I wish I had. I wish I had it. I only have the stories. But it's, re it's really sad. But so this would be a reason as to why I would be getting so, so much retaliation in Tucson, Arizona. Because this would be a district in which forced displacement would have already occurred in another case, in the case of Irma Tovar, and see, and now see, I'm the bitch because I'm trying to put a stop to this. Put a stop to these law enforcement scandals that have crossed over between Nevada, California, and Arizona, it looks like, from and into Texas for many, many years. Wendy and I, we have California and Arizona in common. Irma Tovar and I have Arizona and Texas in common. Wendy has Iowa singular. I have Nevada singular. And uh, th then, of course, you know, Adrian's half sister, Brooke. So her case would have been a, a, a crossover between Nevada and California, too. But, you know, when I talked to them in the fall of 2010, they were still together. I have a feeling Tabitha's dead. I'm feeling that they killed Tabitha. And uh, she's made no attempts that I have known for her. You know, see, when she called me in, in the fall of 2010, apparently she found my cell phone number on Facebook. Okay, I've had my cell phone numbers on Facebook. I, n there's been no further attempts for her to contact me. I have a feeling that they've murdered her after Senator Harry Reid opened up this FBI investigation. And then Brooke is apparently out of the country if I'm understanding the State Department correctly. Kids. Well, it's like a retired attorney said from the State Department. Well, maybe someday they'll quit using kids as a pawn. You know what? I, you know what? No. Not unless somebody legally stops it. Tonight's episode of War Crimes Unit, keep your stun gun or machine gun handy. There's a lot of fucking damn bad law enforcement in the United States. Watch your kids. Never trust your kids to most law enforcement. You just never know. See you next time.